So with that, I would like to ask uh, Mr. Powell to join us on stage, reverse your roles a little bit. Not a listener anymore, but this time the presenter. <laughs> so you will be talking about a world between frames. Event cameras come of age for machine vision. Indeed. Great. Okay. Okay. So, um, all right. Let's make sure I can. So the big, big green one is for yep. forward. Then, if you need to point, then this one. Yeah, I can go back to... there. Yeah. I guess. How do I go back? Sorry. Okay. So my, the title of my speech is um, "A World Between Frames." I'm from Prophecy. Uh, a couple of couple of points about Prophecy. We are probably a bit more than a a startup at this point with uh, over a, almost 130 million raised. Um, we are about 120 people based in, in France, uh, mainly Paris and Grenoble, uh, although we have five offices across the globe. Uh, many strong investors. We, we have many fundamental patents in the art of event-based sensing. Okay, so this is really what we do. Our, our products are sensors, but work with events and not the classic uh, frame-based uh, CMOS that we all know and love. Part of our offer is also a software, although this is mainly for evaluation purposes because the ecosystem doesn't really exist at this point. Uh, and um, we, we have to build that up. It's relatively new technology, of course. So, although something very new, um, it's growing extremely fast, and I think there's a consensus, a consensus sorry, among uh, different, um, different areas of, of research from YOL, Accenture, ID Tech, that this is really going to become a mainstream uh, technology in the future and predictions of, for example, 8% eight, uh, 8 of the uh, AI market in 2030. So this is really what I want to talk about. So let, let, let's try and understand a little bit about, uh, about event-based sensing compared with the frame-based sensors we all know. So uh, the sensor itself, the best way to consider it is that each pixel is like an imaging system in its own right. So whereas uh, a frame-based sensor would have five, eight, maybe transistors in the pixel, uh, these have maybe 80 to 100 transistors. Uh, so each pixel is almost completely autonomous uh, and um, asynchronous from the rest. So as soon as there's a, a contrast detection, so basically the photodiode sampling light permanently, and as soon as we see a contrast difference above a programmable threshold, the device will output the event. And, and the event data is basically x, y, t. So x, y meaning where it is in the array, t being, being a unique timestamp down to one microsecond of res resolution. So obviously these, these are quite different uh, animals and really bring a lot of benefits in sparse data and um, very, very good for fast, uh, rapid applications um, because of this very low latency. Okay. I'll go into a little more detail about that in a second, but the, uh, there's also embedded features in our sensors. Um, you can do event rate control to limit the number of, of uh, events, for example. Uh, do high pass, low pass, and band pass filtering to either recognize frequencies that you want or reject one frequencies that you don't want. Uh, and this is all embedded in, in the sensor itself. And then you have other things like multiple regions of interest, for example, where you can have different uh, contrast detection thresholds in different areas of the area, of the, of the image. Um, okay, and then obviously with so many transistors in a pixel, 3D stacked BSI is actually, you know, these, these devices are made for that technology. 
and that gives us in the future the, the possibility to embed micro and SRAM, so for machine learning, for example, really embedded in the device itself. So, this is something we always show people that helps you to grasp what, what is an event uh, versus a frame of data. So, so on the right-hand side, you can see, or the left-hand side, actually, or my left, you see that there's, um, you see that there's a, a, a rotating disk, and uh, with a conventional frame-based camera, um, you'll see a dot at regular intervals at the frame rate. If it spins very quickly, then obviously you'll see uh, blurring. But with the event camera, uh, we only we see everything that's between the frames, which is the, the title of this, uh, this speech. Um, so basically what we have is, is much less data. You're only seeing the, the movement. Um, so instead of a lot of redundant data in, in full frames, um, you see basically everything you need between the frames, okay? And this is obviously sparse data, so it reduces processing overhead. They're inherently HDR. They have a high dynamic range. So again, comparing with a, a frame-based sensor, uh, the dynamic range is, is set by the noise floor and the saturation level of, of the pixel. And um, in the same way, it's the difference between the, the, this minimum and no, noise floor and maximum saturation level. We define that for an event sensor as the, the difference between the minimum illuminance range that we can make uh, a predictable detection and the highest. And that's typically 120 dB of difference. Okay, the uh, events, since we're looking at the relative levels uh, are not absolute, it becomes far more tolerant to uh, non-uniformities. A, a typical one that can be quite a problem in machine vision is, uh, is vignetting issues with the uh, chief ray angles. Um, and again, since we're far less impacted by, um, by the absolute level changes, we have uh, far more, um, far, far less problems with vignetting, in fact. And the same thing applies really to, uh, to general SNR. Uh, we work w very well at low light also, as a result. Okay, so th this is one of the most interesting things, I think, also, is that an event being a, a discrete point in time with a, with a one, one microsecond precision timestamp means that you don't get blurring on images, which is obviously a, a big issue for, for frame-based cameras where you have an exposure period. There is no exposure period, in fact, in an in in event sensor. As a result, we don't get blurring. And uh, th this, is, this is quite significant because we all know that to counteract blurring, you have to reduce the integration period or the exposure time. If you do that, you accumulate less light, and the only compensation for that is more, is more, um, is more light on the pixels or more um, illumination. It gets expensive, and there are finite limits with all that. So, so this fact that you can do, uh, you have no blurring in the in the application uh, in the event sensor. You can actually use that in conjunction with a, with a frame-based sensor and remove the blurring by just measuring, uh, uh, observing the events during the exposure period of the pixel. And um, this is something that's gathering uh, you know, a lot of interest in things like mobile applications um, because you can effectively increase your exposure rate, which would normally worsen the problem. Uh, but of course, make it work at lower light much better. But the the, the uh, deblurring effect of the event sensor can allow you to do that. Similarly, between frames, there's a world, uh, and event sensors can can actually interpolate what's happening between one frame and the next. Also, 
Um, so as you can do ultra slow motion on the fly type ultra slow motion uh, by using an event, uh, event sensor in combination with an RGB um, classic CMOS sensor. So let's, let's look at some of the applications. Uh, there are many other benefits as well, but I think these are the principal ones I wanted to, I wanted to bring to your attention that really do, do need a different mindset compared to you know, the, 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 um, the frame-based sensors that we all know. So uh, it, there are many applications, and um, of course, this, this being an, a new type of technology, um, it's generally met with suspicion compared to um, conventional methods because there are some unique applications that, that uh, event sensing can do, um, but generally it's also a way of reducing cost or improving the performance in existing uh, cam machine vision camera applications. So I'll just pick out a few of these. Again, if you wanted to see these working live, you, please come to our stand. Uh, I'd be happy to show you around these uh, working in real time. So one of the obvious areas, uh, I think, is particle size monitoring. So this could be as shown here. We, uh, this is a video from our partner, uh, Imago, who, who have um, we have developed a camera, in fact, with our VGA sensor. And this application is just uh, particle size monitoring. A, a difficult use case because the, these are transparent capsules, which can be quite, quite difficult um, with, with conventional line scan cameras, for example, and high light levels. Um, so we're able to get better than 99% precision, able to see quite difficult uh, T typical cases, in this case, uh, transparent capsules. Um, and really, again, you're only looking at very, very sparse data at high speed. Uh, we have a demo for this, for example, on our stand, and uh, it, it runs at about somewhere between five to eight meters per second, uh, and uh, works perfectly well at that speed. Spatter monitoring is another one. I mean, uh, Industrial welding, grinding, using automat automobile manufacturing, for example, robotics. Um, this is an ideal application for, for event sensing because we can get up to 200K frames per second. Again, there's no frames. It's just to give you a, a, a better idea. It's actually five, micro time, five microseconds of time resolution and simultaneous XYT tracking of particles, so you're able to see the spatter uh, and uh, see its trajectories. And again, thanks to this na uh, native 120 dB scene dynamic. Uh, another typical application, optical flow. Uh, this is used often in you know, motion tracking, people counting, automated door opening. Um, safety systems, and again, simply due to the fact that we're looking at just the objects that are moving in the frame, then um, we're dealing with much less data and uh, being able to see things at higher speed. So you can do quite a lot of computational things with that. So in, in here you see that we, we're doing um, not only not only uh, observation, but also tracking and vectorial analysis as well. So we get the features only on the moving objects. And, and, and as a result of all that, we see something in the range of 17 times less power uh, at system level compared to a, a tr traditional image sensing method. Another one is vibration and frequency monitoring. Um, Again, this is something for predictive maintenance, for example, where you can see um, uh, recurring patterns of, of, of frequencies in, in the events. Um, these can correspond to, to moving parts, for example, uh, in this case, rotating gear wheels. Um, and then you can also see 
if it, if it moves by at least a pixel, you can see if it's actually vibrating on a different axis also. Uh, so this is used for predictive maintenance, for example. So instead of sticking something to the side of a machine to measure the, 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 the vibration, it can be done with an event camera, which is you know, non-intrusive um, and um, very easy to set up. Okay. Um, we do, th we do uh, okay, uh, structured light, uh, 3D. This is something, again, very useful with a, an event sensor. Uh, and I'll have to speed up a little bit, but using a, a, a Vixel technology um, with a partner of ours, we have a, a demonstrator which will be available for, for customers to evaluate, which is capable of producing 600 3D point clouds per second. And again, due to the other uh, advantages, higher robustness to, to motion uh, and uh, lighting conditions. Okay, so, so okay, this is what we actually sell. Uh, um, this is a product that we've developed in conjunction with, with Sony um, on, on the 3D stacked BSI process. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this is ideal for this kind of technology. Um, and this is actually a, a, an event sensor uh, that is just going into mass production uh, with the smallest pixel to date. It's a 4.86 micron pixel and um, has many, many nice features. Uh, as I mentioned, the different filtering capabilities and can fulfill very wide-ranging uh, machine vision and even some consumer IoT-type applications. So I, I wanted to get through my slides, so I only <laughs> a minute and a half left. So, so um, the other thing we do, as I mentioned, is actually make uh, software by necessity because um, conventional software suites uh, are based on frames and not on events. So we've made a uh, very comprehensive, uh, what we call MetaVision software, which allows customers to, for free to evaluate uh, our sensing technology and, and reproduce uh, many different applications, the ones I've shown uh, and many more, uh, with 95 algorithms and, and different code uh, samples. Okay, there, there, there's also a, a machine learning toolkit, which is uh, the largest uh, public data set available also. Um, and also a community of 5,000 OpenEB members. So this is open source, uh, mainly academic and research, but there's, there's a myriad of different applications um, that people can benefit from, people who have already uh, started experimenting and advancing using event sensing for, for uh, different kinds of applications. Okay, so um, just, just a word about building the ecosystem. So this is obviously, we're still quite, quite new and uh, the technology is uh, not yet mainstream, but in events to make it uh, get, get somewhere there, we have uh, partnerships with some um, very important partners. MV Tech, this has been announced very recently. Uh, and again, this is something important to build the infrastructure for event sensing. So you, you can see on our stand uh, also um, the Halcon software working with event sensing. Um, a few camera manufacturers just got into full, full production, so Lucid uh, and Century Arcs. Several new ones to be to be announced, and also the work with Framos uh, mustn't be overlooked. Also, uh, uh, and they also produce a reference design with a NVIDIA uh, ISP chip. Um, and also, we have a similar uh, situation with a with a company called DMP in Japan, uh, and this is a, a system using a, a C3 uh, FPGA, but um, running some AI algorithms on it for, for uh, door opening, people counting, this kind of thing. So it's a, an exciting time, and I think I can close with that. 
and if there's anything you'd like to see really working, we have uh, six or seven different demos on our stand. Be more than happy to show you around if you have the time this afternoon. And um, you can get much more from our website, of course, as well, by clicking on the link. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Powell, uh, did I hear it right that Imago is a partner? Imago is a camera manufacturer, yes, who uh, was already a camera um, in production using our VGA sensor. That's a perfect cue for me to move, move on to the next one because <laughs> unfortunately we don't have time for any more questions.